Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Attack series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking another look at the games between Stockfish and Torch in the CCC 20 Bullet Finals. I'm really sorry for uh, for Torch lovers but I've got another great uh, Stockfish game. It uh, The problem was was that um, yeah Stockfish really played um, a huge number of really amazing uh, games. All of them with uh, yeah peace sacrifices and stuff like that and uh, well I just can't help showing them really. Um, let's have a look. So this was a position after a Karakhan advance um, and um, well you know White's built up a very nice position obviously you know very big uh, kingside uh, uh, advantage here space advantage f4 to f5 is imminent. We've got a knight on h5 here which is uh, attacking the pawn on g7 so it's keeping this um, this bishop on f8 uh, passive and yeah, you know, what can black really do here? Um, well, it's it's not particularly easy. I mean, um, these pawns are really restricting the uh, the black pieces. Um, you've got the b4 square for your knight, maybe, but uh, you can't really achieve that much. And um, the, the basic worry on top of all of that is what is black going to do with that king? Um, is it going to try and go kingside? Well, with these uh, pawns aiming towards it, that's quite worrying. Or is he going to try and go queen side? And that's not so easy with the, the rook on c1 uh, putting pressure like that. So it's just a very, very difficult uh, situation for um, for black here. Um, I mean, black could play a move like bishop takes h5. But after g takes h5, you know, white simply gains the g file to attack the g7 pawn. And well, that's either going to keep the bishop pinned to f8 or it's going to keep the king uh, in, uh, in difficulties. Um, yeah, I mean... Um, one idea that um, that Stockfish tried, um, oh no, actually that uh, well, both Stockfish and Dragon tried. In actual fact, was to play a6, and then try and play King d8 and uh, run away. Um, but yeah, it's not particularly pleasant. F5, Bishop h4, check, takes takes, and Rook takes f5, and we're just going to power on uh, against those pawns. We've got this one as as a weakness as well. It's just a very unpleasant position. We've also got Bishop g4 if we want just to chase the rook away from the c-file which will give us extra power along here as well just everywhere you look there's problems basically so yeah i mean i guess the opening was quite difficult and uh, well the early middle game just hasn't really improved things so torch played the move bishop a3 just um uh, hitting the rook on c1 i was already uh, thinking maybe of uh, taking on g7 sacrificing the exchange but um uh, stockfish played uh, rook a1 and now bishop to b4. Um, bishop b2, uh, in a bullet game, you'd say, ha ha, you've missed that. But uh, of course, knight b5 is going to be very strong here. Bishop a1, we give a knight d6 check. And after king f8, queen a1. Knight's attacking the rook on c8, and we're also threatening f5 here. You know, it's going to be complete carnage, basically. So that's not good. But um, Torch played the move um, bishop b4, just attacking the, uh, the knight on c3. And, uh, you know... First um, idea, you might think, well, you know, maybe a little bit awkward if the knight moves out to b5, then uh, we'll have a6. Yeah, you know, maybe uh, force white to, to, to move forwards, you know, and uh, who knows, you know, you might get, uh, you might, uh, you might get lucky somehow. Um, but here Stockfish uh, started um, uh, a really amazing sequence and uh, yeah, pieces hanging everywhere and just this massive attack. So knight takes uh, g7 check, king f8. Uh, we've got two knights hanging, Stockfish plays and knight takes e6 check. And after f takes e6, f5. So, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the black king is uh, is kind of uh, a little bit in the way here. Um, you're going to need to find um, a good square for this, uh, for this bishop because, well, we just want to take off on here and then give some sort of discovered check and uh, the rook's going to come into f7 and it's just going to be curtains. So, um, yeah, Bishop F7 was uh, played by my engines uh, an awful lot, but it's it's not so different, really. Uh, Torch played uh, the move Bishop H7, and um, Stockfish played Knight B5. So, Knight's getting out of the attack and aiming for D6, for example. And uh, Torch played the move uh, A6 here, and uh, I think this was the real, this was the, 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 the uh, open mouth uh, moment, really. The moment why I really wanted to, uh, to show this game, because uh, A6 attacks the knight. I mean, obviously you're threatening A takes B5. 
you know, if you go something like knight d6, well, we can, you know, we can take it at least and uh, get our pieces a little bit free, get a little bit of space. It's still going to be very difficult, but we can at least do something. But um, Stockfish played this um, this amazing uh, little switchback that uh, I really loved. Played the move bishop to e1. Bishop to e1, what's the point? Well, the point is, of course, that after a takes b5, we've got f takes e6. This uh, uh, bishop e1 move has opened up the f-file against the black king. Um, and, of course, you know, what's going to happen? You're going to play this move bishop takes b4, get rid of the bishop, and then that's going to free d6 for the knight. The knight's going to be able to move in there, attack the rook, and black can't destroy it at all. Actually, it's just a fixture there forever. So... Um, yeah, Torch found uh, the move Queen E7, so it's uh, protecting the bishop on B4 and also, you know, sort of uh, sidestepping F takes E6. Well, F takes E6 happened anyway. King G8, Bishop B4, Queen takes B4, and now Knight D6. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously this is this is really serious for uh, for for Black. So um, Queen takes D4 was played by Torch, um, looking to exchange off Queens. Willing to give up this um, uh, this exchange, of course, you know the knight would come back into play, be able maybe able to come to e7. I mean, you've got threats like bishop e4 check as well, just um, um, you know, just uh, um, inconveniencing the uh, the white king there. But um, yeah, Stockfish just sort of carries on as if nothing's wrong. It <laughs> just plays a5 here. So what's the point of a5? A5 wants to chase the knight away, and then we'll be able to take the rook for free. Um, quite impressive, isn't it? I mean, um, you know, we've had um, uh, a sack on the king side there. Uh, then we're playing in the centre with knight d6, and then we're playing a5 on the queen side, and everything sort of links up somehow. I mean, it's really, it's really beautiful play. I mean, that was one of the things that was, uh, you know, so impressive about uh, Alpha Zero, of course. You know, playing against Stockfish Eight, so uh, not the, uh, <laughs> not by any means the uh, the current strength of uh, of, uh, of Engine of Stockfish, you know, of, of all these things. But um, you know, it was really the the whole board play. You know, the the uh, the ability somehow to uh, to combine. Um, uh, elements, you know, from from the whole board, and somehow it all comes together, you know, in one enormous uh, outburst of powerful play. And um, well, I mean, you know, all of the top engines can do it, and well, Stockfish can do it in an unbelievably tactical way. So uh, Queen takes e5, uh, Torch putting up um, uh, a tough defence here. So um, the idea is, if takes, we can just take that knight. Um, but here again, you know, a very very nice move here, knight f5. And uh, it's, um, you know, you, you've got, it's just so weird, right? I mean, because, uh, you know, you put the knight on, on d6, it's, it's attacking a rook. Um, you've got this advanced pawn on e6. And all that white does is say, well, actually, I don't care about the rook. I don't care about my pawn. All I'm going to do now is uh, I've completely shattered your position. I've uh, pushed you to all corners of the board. And now I'm just going to put my pieces in the center and walk through you. And that's basically what happens. So after knight a8, we get this, this nice quiet move, bishop d3. Um, bishop g6 from, uh, from torch, maybe just giving the, uh, the king some space or giving the rook some space. And just queen f3. And uh, we're just aiming for uh, rook e1. And well, this pawn is going to be a runner if black doesn't do anything. So queen e6 and rook e1. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Black's position really does look like it's been completely splintered somehow, you know, just uh, completely shattered and, you know, the knight driven away to a8. You know, what are all these pieces doing? Um, now, if queen f7, we've got uh, di many different moves, but queen f4 was very nice. This was, this was Stockfish against Dragon in one of my games. Um, queen d7, I just take on h6, takes, takes, bishop d3, and then we go... Oh, this amazing move, rook f5. Look at that. Bishop f5, gf. And then we've got rook g1 there. And if you try and play queen g7 or something, I've got queen e6. And I'm picking up that one. And then afterwards, the knight on a8 will be trapped. Just um, absolutely incredible. Incredible all the way. And actually, uh, the funny thing was in this game, Stockfish didn't even take uh, the rook. Just went f6, knight d8, queen f5, queen g6, rook e7. And, uh, well, the end was not far away. Just an amazing play. Amazing play all the way from uh, from uh, from the engines. So Torch played knight e5. 
and Queen G3 and now Rook E8. And uh, yeah, this is the other impressive thing, really. Well, I mean, you know, I think the definitely human move, you just play the move Rook E2. And actually that also happened in my ending games. And, uh, you know, we're just going Rook E2 and Rook Fe1. We're going to grab this pawn and then, well, actually you're, you're equal in material. But uh, yeah, you know, all the positional advantages you've got, um, you know, they're just going to make sure that you uh, win the game. Um, this stockfish played uh, simply h4, um, looking to play something like uh, h5 and uh, put the, the question to this bishop. So um, b5 played by torch, it's all getting a little bit desperate. Um, and now rook e2. Knight c7, h5, chase that bishop back and rook e1. So um, yeah, I mean stockfish has just optimised this position. Was it necessary to go h4, h5? You could just have taken the piece back. Who knows, but if it's good enough for Stockfish, it's good enough for me, I guess. So Queen F6, Rook E5, takes, takes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we've got all sorts of threats. I mean, uh, you know, Rook E7 is coming in there. Knight E7 is coming in. Knight E6 played. Now Rook takes D5. And um, Knight F4. So um, just... Uh, um, well, discovering an attack on the uh, on the rook on d4, but I mean the big problem is is that these pieces are so terrible. Uh, the the rest of the black pieces are not so bad, but uh, this one's really really awkward. Obviously, you know, whilst the bishop's on d3, you can't play the king to h7 because you'll just get a discovered attack there. So uh, rook d4, knight e6, rook d7, knight f4. In again, why not? Um, the idea of that one was uh, here. I can go queen c6 check and pick up the uh, the rook. That would be quite cunning. But just queen f3 again, uh, knight e6, queen e3, and uh, it's just, uh, you know, completely squeezing, really. Knight f8, rook a7, and, uh, yeah, torch gives some checks there, but, um, yeah, it's all it's all really finished. And, uh, well, we're threatening rook g7, we're also threatening knight e7 check, it's all finished. And after rook h7, takes, takes, knight e7, stockfish won the piece, and um, uh, the win was not far behind afterwards. Um, yeah, once again, I do apologise to Torch fans uh, for giving yet another uh, Stockfish win, but I, I thought this one was really, really gorgeous. And uh, in particular, um, you know, I did think that this move, um, uh, 26 uh, Bishop E1, was unbelievably good. You know, f sort of moves that, uh, you know, if I find them at the board, then I'm uh, just such a thrill there. And, uh, well, yeah, you know, Stockfish just finds it in a bullet game. Uh, just uh, absolutely incredible what these monsters can do, but um, yeah, I mean it was a, it was a great match. Yeah, it was um, um, obviously Stockfish was quite a bit on top, but uh, it really was um, a fantastic match, full of uh, of great chess. And uh, I could ask the question, you know, um, you know these are bullet games, you know, are they really good quality? But yeah, you know, I mean. Uh, um, you cannot imagine how much these engines uh, see. You know, they'd uh, they'd uh, they'd probably beat uh, you know the the top human. They'd beat Magnus probably with uh, you know ten milliseconds for the whole game. I think so. Uh, you know, uh, just the the level that is being played at on this sort of hardware is just incredible. So uh, yeah, no fear about that. These are super high quality games, better than any human has ever played by far. So there we are. Hope you're enjoying this. I'll try and find some uh, some good torch games as well. Um, and uh, but I'll keep on uh, looking at some incredible peace sacrifices from the monster fish as well. And um, yeah, you know, otherwise, thanks very much for uh, for watching the video. Why not give a like, subscribe, take a look at my new books and otherwise watch out for the next video and hope to see you there.